Obviously. Okay. Okay. All right. I think we are live if this is working. Hello. Welcome in. Um, who do I see in the chat? There is Uravity. Welcome in. Um, so today, like it says on the canvas before you, we're going to be learning about variety. Um, variety, one of the principles of design. We're continuing the principles of design series where we worked on, what was it last time? It was proportion. Um, which was, <laughs> that one was tough. This one's going to be equally tough. Um, but we'll be learning a bit about that. But before we get to that, hello, Gear, welcome in. Um, before we get to that, though, let's talk a bit about the stream. Because if you've been here before, then you know the drill. Um, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. And we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, we can keep making free content. Consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone all right let's see give me a moment to reopen the chat hello shailene oh that's mora <laughs> that's one of our <laughs> lovely mods hey welcome in okay variety so let's talk a bit about variety we're let's start by i'm kind of kind of messed up today hello lewis welcome in uh let's start by talking about what actually right what variety actually is so let's define it let's define it what is gra what is variety Nope, that's right. Did I spell that right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what is variety? So variety is the principle of art. That adds interest. To an artwork. Oops. Hello, Riley. Welcome in. I spelled that wrong twice. To an artwork. Works through contrast. Of elements. different elements equals variety. So what is variety? Overall variety is the principle of art that adds interest to an artwork, right? If we talked about uh, unity and harmony a few weeks back, right? So with unity and harmony, it's the all the elements that are similar, all the elements that are the same that create unity throughout an entire piece. However, variety is what breaks up that unity. So Variety is the principle of art that adds interest to your artwork. If everything is exactly the same within your piece, it's going to look really, really boring, right? So you need that variety in there to make sure that your artwork feels more interesting, right? You want to make sure that there are different elements that you can look at. Hello, Lone Wolf. Welcome in. Um, so this works through the contrast of elements, right? If you have contrast within your piece, you have variety because at the, at the very least, you'll have stuff that looks different from one another. Um, if you use just black and white, like say if we're go like really harsh contrast, even just using black and white adds a little bit of variety. I'd figure to say that that's not enough. Uh, but regardless, depends on what you're doing. So different elements equal variety. Different elements within your artworks will equal variety, right? However, let's write this in red too much. Variety. can lead to no unity. You need to balance them. Balance unity and variety to have a unified but interesting piece.
yes, happy Thanksgiving to Americans. Uh, happy American Thanksgiving if you celebrate. I guess it's more like Black Friday now. But um, happy American Thanksgiving. So too much variety can lead to no unity, right? If you have variety, you do need variety. You have to have variety in a piece in order for it to be interesting to look at, right? However, well, you don't, okay. <laughs> That's a little bit hard to stop. 99% um, of the time you need variety within a piece in order for it to be interesting, right? What the definition of art is kind of subjective. Um, but too much, variety, too much variety can lead to no unity, right? If you have too much variety within a piece, the piece will not feel unified. It'll feel like a bunch of random elements inside of an art piece. You're going, okay, what am I looking at? <laughs> right? Um, I'm Italian, but okay, you have Italian. This is what Italian Thanksgiving is? I didn't know that. Um, hello, Sleepy. Welcome in. So if we have too much variety within a piece, um, it'll just feel like a bunch of random stuff tossed around. Right. If you have a bunch of random stuff tossed around, it will not feel unified. So you need to balance unity and variety to have a unified but interesting piece. Your piece needs to be interesting. You need to have enough variety in order for the entire piece to feel interest, um, interesting, but enough unity in order for the piece to feel like all the elements belong to one another. Right. So it's a very, very thin line <laughs> when it comes to that. Um, but Oftentimes you'll see artists, I'm not going to write this down, but oftentimes you'll see artists, they'll do trade-offs for their elements. So say if you chose um, to work with variety through line, but unity through color, right? If we were to work with unity and harmony through color, you'd work with a palette that's like very, very analogous or maybe monochromatic if you were working with something that was very, very um, unified through that, but your line work might be very, very varied right? So maybe there's a lot of different line weighting throughout your line works and that creates variety with an otherwise very unified palette. And it creates something nice that you can look at something very interesting. Hello, Aku, welcome in. Ah, uh, no, there isn't Thanksgiving in Italy, but it's a holiday in America. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a Canadian Thanksgiving is before Halloween. Um, so we have Thanksgiving as well, but it's before Halloween. Um, so I know it's American Thanksgiving, but Canadian was a while ago. Hello, Chipster. Good morning from Australia. Oh, other side of the world. <laughs> Welcome in. Glad you can make it. Happy late afternoon from Canada. All right. So that's kind of the explanation of what variety actually is. Um, I mentioned last time when I taught proportion that proportion was hard to teach. Variety is even harder. So <laughs> the thing with variety is I could just end the lesson right here. There really isn't a lot of extra terms or a lot of extra things that come with variety. Variety is just something that you need to work with um, in order to create your, make your unity a little bit more interesting. Um, obviously, I can't just end it here, though. <laughs> so what we're actually going to do, we're going to do it a little bit differently today, because um, usually what I do is I split it up into sections and I'll do a little bit of a lecture first and then I'll have the example. What we're going to do today instead um, is we're going to work directly from the example. So I'll actually show you the examples first. And based off of the art piece that I have in front of you, we're going to analyze it and I'll talk to you about how there's variety working throughout that piece. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing today compared to what we normally do. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you can see chat has variety. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> yes, everyone, welcome in the new lovely mods. Brother's watching with me. He says, hi. Hello, Sleepy's brother. Welcome in. Okay, so we're going to start with Roy Lichtenstein. Uh, you'll notice today that a lot of these artworks are within the 1900s. So a lot of them are very, a little more modern than some of the past examples that we've done. Different. Yeah, we're switching up the, we're switching up the system a little bit. Because uh, variety is really hard to teach. <laughs> I sat for five, I sat for too long with my notes not knowing what to do. Hello, Violet. Welcome in. Glad you can make it. Okay, so number one, this first piece that we're going to be taking a look at is Crying Girl. So I actually am going to keep the pieces in here while I work with them. So Crying Girl, Girl by Roy Lichtenstein. I can never spell his name. L I. C H E no T T E N S T E I N. I love Roy Lichtenstein. Design, yes, this is a principle of design. Um, we're gonna be talking about the principles of design. Um, but Roy Lichtenstein was a pop artist. Um, from back in the 
1900s, so mid to late 1900s. This piece was created in 1964. It's one of his more popular ones. So this piece in particular, right, so we're going to be working straight from the, the examples this time, um, rather than having a little lecture portion beforehand, we're going to be doing it directly on there. Um, so this piece utilizes a variety in a few ways. So variety, this is one is mostly variety through texture. Actually, it's more heavily through line and minorly texture. Oops. Is Van Gogh in here? Van Gogh is not in here, but Van Gogh uses a lot of variety um, within his, not necessarily texture, within his color mostly, color and line. Um, because Van Gogh used a lot of very bright colors. Um, they were all within the kind of analogous complementary scheme, especially his like very popular stuff. Um, I don't have an example of Van Gogh here today. Um, like I said, most of these examples are past the 1900s. Um, yeah, they all are. They all are. The earliest one of, within these paintings is... 1922. So they're all within the 1900s. So Van Gogh is a little bit older than that. So this is Crying Girl by Roy Lickenstein. So this is variety through line and minorly texture. So this one uses Bende Dots, which is a thing that Lickenstein coined. Yeah, Van Gogh wasn't a pop artist, but his work is in lots of pop culture now. Very, very true. Van Gogh, is, um, Van Gogh and Keith Haring are very, very popular within a lot of current um, pop culture. Like fashion, people love to see it within fashion. Um, fashion especially, that's a very, very heavy one. Um, Van Gogh was Impressionism, right? I think so? Okay. Sorry, friend is behind me. Um, but yeah, I think he was Impressionist, if I remember correctly. Impressionism, post-impressionism, more like. Oh, you know what? I think post-impressionism. Um, but yeah, he wasn't a pop artist, but definitely very, very popular. So Ben Daydots is coined by... Sorry? Yeah, post-impressionism. Okay, so yeah, he was post-impressionist. Ben Daydots is coined by... What can see? is using dots in close proximity to create new hues adds texture to a flat illustration I'm just going to short form it. So the main thing is Bende Dots, right? The Bende Dots, which is um, the minor texture bit within this variety. So Bende Dots um, were coined by Lickenstein. Lickenstein is the person who created them, um, which is using dots in close proximity to create new hues. You'll see this a lot with pointillism. Um, you'll see this a lot with... Um, well, he you saw it a lot in pointillism, which is an early form, but Bende Dots were used mostly in print, um, which is within the pop art era. Right. Um, so, but the thing with them is that they add, because this is the pop art movement, you have a lot of screen printed stuff that could be printed over and over. Um, so you get a lot of very, very flat textures. However, these Ben Day dots, what they did is they added, they broke up those flat textures. So they created that nice little added bit of texture, which gives the piece overall a nice sense of texture. Um, so it create, adds texture to an overall flat illustration. All right, so that's number one. Number two is through line, right? There's just a lot of line variation. I'm just gonna put line variation. Sorry, I see the chat moving. I'll talk to it in a second. So the second one, which is just like line variation, right? Especially within pop art. There was line art before pop art, but pop art really brought it to the forefront of the um, like fine arts world. Um, so you saw a lot of line art being used, a lot of stuff that was a little bit less realistic, a little more graphic when pop art started popping around. Um, haha, started popping around anyway. <laughs> but um, Roy Lichtenstein was a very, very um, popular version of this where he brought this comic book style within the... He used a lot of very, very poppy icons in order to bring them to um, the fine arts world, which is something that 
was not was kind of frowned upon <laughs> back then. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of line different line variation within here. Um, how do you add variety when you work with graphite? The thing with graphite is graphite is very very versatile. Graphite is for those who don't know, graphite is what you, what is within your pencils. It is not lead, it is graphite. Um, lead will kill you. So when you have a lot of, um, with, with graphite, you can add it, um, its texture can be very literal or implied. If you were to add graphite with te uh, texture with graphite, um, oh, sorry, if you were to add variety with graphite, you can do it a few ways. Obviously you can use it with texture. Um, if you were to illustrate like something, um, you could add, implied texture which is just you know draw different things they will have different textures depending on what you draw <laughs> right a rock is different than a bush so on and so forth um if you wanted that literal texture what you could do is use a um textured sheet of paper that'll give you a bit of variety within there i think with graphite again it's very very versatile um it's literally just whatever what you draw will determine if there's variety or not <laughs> um like you got to have the different elements in there and graphite is only in black and white, right? It is a gray, um, achromatic, um, medium. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to utilize values, your values. So that's black, uh, your lights and darks, um, to add that contrast in there. Um, are Bende dots the same as the ones used in classic comics? Yes. So Roy Lickenstein is the one who brought that into there. I believe if I remember correctly, um, but he, he started to use them with screen tones first. So it was with like, um, not screen tones. Sorry. That's not the right one. Uh, silk screen. That's it. So he started to use it with silk screen compared. Hi from Luxembourg. Welcome in. That's in the UK. If I remember correctly, I'm very bad with geography. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. <laughs> I think that's the UK. <laughs> All right. Let's make this larger. I don't know why it's so small let's make that 8,000 but yeah so that's crying girl by Roy Lickenstein that's our first little example of the day can I move all of these at once oh let's go sometimes it does not work because mini bang doesn't always work that way all right so number two we're getting a little more modern this is Grace Kelly 3 by I don't know Amy Noble I believe that's how you pronounce that I could be wrong. I'm so sorry if I butchered that name. Um, this is our second example. So number two is Grace Kelly three, which is written in Roman numerals by Emmy. I hate. I think that's an I. <laughs> Emmy. noble so this is a contemporary art piece we haven't really talked about contemporary um so this was created in 1994 so this is an example of a really repetitive piece so this is a very repetitive piece so this is a piece that leans more that leans very heavily on unity And its variety through color. So without the shifting colors, with each rectangle. This piece would feel very monotonous. Very pretty. Love the colors. All the same, but different. Oh no, shapes and stuff. Shapes and stuff. Super true. Um, this is a triadic scheme, so they are all <laughs> they are all within that kind of range of a very same color scheme. Because if you'll notice, they only work with red, blue, and yellow. Um, pink is a derivative of red, right? So you have a lot of red, blues, and yellows in here. Um, oh, there's actually an orange in here. That breaks it up a little bit. Um, oh, then maybe this is a... Oh, you know what? This is a split complementary. My bad. <laughs> I think this is a split. Double split complementary. 
with a contemporary palette. I could be wrong. I hope I'm not. <laughs> My color theory prof is glaring at me right now. <laughs> he senses a disturbance. Uh, so this piece is Grace Kelly uh, the Third or Three by Amy Noble. Uh, so this is a piece that leans very, very heavily on unity. Um, so if you look at this piece, clearly a lot of unity happening here. Um, how many squares are there? Row 6, 12, 18. There's 24 rectangles within there. They're all the same size, all the same length, width, right? They're pretty well the exact same around the board when it comes to their shape, their form whatsoever. Um, all that fun jazz. So it's very, very heavily unified, right? You have a lot of unity. However, there's variety through color. There is that little bit of uh, variety, right? It is a mostly red-blue kind of palette, red cyan, depending on how you look at it, right? So it does have that um, that palette in there, but overarching, overall, they all feel like they still fit, but it has a nice sense of variety. Um, so without the shifting colors, with each rectangle, this piece would feel very, very monotonous. If they were all the exact same color, it would feel very, very monotonous. It would feel like, oh yeah, I'm looking at a bunch of rectangles. I mean, contemporary art. This is contemporary, so it is a little bit weird. Um, but at the same time, what this does is it gives it a nice little pleasing way to look at something that's very, very repetitive. Though we're going to be talking about repetition in a different, a different stream, because that's another principle that we haven't talked about yet. Yeah, so that's kind of variety through color. Next one that we're going to be talking about is a Monet piece. So this is the oldest piece that we have in here. So not Van Gogh, but we are going to be going through Monet. <laughs> well, Monet's very late, very late works. Um, if we did uh, Monet's earlier works, then we would have gone into the 1800s. Um, but this is from 1922 to 1924. So we do have a little bit later. It's a little bit later. Monet's life. So this is number three. The house scene. From the Rose Garden. Oh, then, you know what? If Monet was like... Okay, then I was wrong. Then Van Gogh would have also been looking at that. No, I don't think so. Regardless. Um, <laughs> This is the house scene for the Rose Garden by Claude Monet. Claude Monet was an impressionist painter. So all of his paintings kind of, all of his later works kind of look like this, right? Where they're a little bit, you can kind of see something in there, but it's more like you're looking at stuff through a fog. He, um, impressionists love to highlight lighting. That was what they focused on the most, lighting and color rather than actual harsh form. So, you know, when you're looking at impressionist paintings, they all kind of feel like they're a little bit hazy. It's almost like looking at them through like fogged lenses or... Um, not fog lenses, but like, uh, glass, not frosted glass. That's it. If you're looking at them through frosted glass or, um, if you put a blur filter on it, whatever, squint your eyes. Um, so they're a little bit more dreamy, but they really love to focus on those light. Kind of looks like old video game blocks. Super true. Kind of looks like Lego. <laughs> this one, I'm assuming. This is a good example of... Uh, so it has unity with color, unity and variety with color. In a more harmonious setting. That's how you spell that, harmonious setting. Whenever people um, like to work with variety, the most ones, the ones that um, tend to be the most popular with variety are shape, form, and line. Those are the easiest ones to add variety with. Um, but color is something that is a little bit tougher. So that's why we're kind of highlighting it twice. Uh, so unity and variety with color in a more harmonious setting. So while the palette is warm overall, Cooler greens. Are added. For that pop. Of 
contrast and variety. Hello, beatboxer. Welcome in. So while this, so the house scene from the Rose Garden by Claude Monet, painted in 1922 to 1924. Right, so this one uses unity and variety with color in a more harmonious setting. So this one is a very, very harmonious piece when it comes to its color, right? While the palette, the palette overall is very, very warm, right? It is a analog, it's an analogous overall, right? You have a lot of oranges, reds, yellows, they all kind of fall in the same area within the color wheel, right? So that's an analogous palette. Um, however, some greens are, are tossed in there. Um, if I were to color pick them, they look very, very cold against this piece, right? These greens look very, very cold against this piece. If I color pick some of them, they're actually a little bit warmer than what they look like on the piece, but they are still, they do still lean towards the blues, right? You have a little, there's a few more warm, warm greens in here, but there's these little pops of cyan. They're like, well, actually let's go back to here. These little pops of like almost cyan over here, right? And what this does is it adds, it breaks up that analogous palette because as beautiful as analogous palettes are they're very easy to work with they're very nice but they can get very very monotonous especially if you use them all the time right and you have your analogous palettes and the thing is though is that they all usually fall within the same color temperature and that can feel very very monotonous so usually what um, artists would like to do is throw in pops of complementary colors so in this case he used a few to kind of pop against the reds he tosses in a few like cyan to greens in there to give it that nice bit of variety to make it feel a little bit stronger. Pavis almost looks like it's seen from a stained window. Very true. It's almost like a stained glass kind of look. All right. Second to last. Oh, we're zooming through these. Uh, second to last, one of my favorite historical artists, Keith Haring, my whole heart. Keith Haring has a lot of unity. So we'll talk about how he uses variety. So number four, this is a technically an untitled piece. Oh, whoops. This is technically an untitled piece. But it's been given the title Dance. Wow. <laughs> By Keith Haring. I love Keith Haring. I know a lot of people really love Van Gogh. I'm a big Keith Haring person. Yeah, the hue of the whole painting does fit together nicely. Yeah, it's a beautiful, warm palette. I've grown very, very fond of colors over the past year. Um, just because, like, I've started to really, really love color theory. Um, but, yeah, I love the colors here. I love complementary palettes. So I'm a really, really big fan of, like, complementary, split complementary, dual split complementary all that fun jazz, because I love the contrast, the harsh contrast of those colors. Um, I don't think they, there's no really complimentary color. Well, this is a very contemporary. No, this is a very traditional triadic color scheme. Oh, whoops. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. There we go. Sorry, it's not my notes. <laughs> but yeah, so this is Untitled Dance by Keith Haring. Right, this one is variety with shape, color, and movement. So movement is technically a principle. Movement is technically a principle. However, variety is one of those fun little principles that works throughout every single one of the elements, uh, elements and principles, right? So not only does it move throughout the elements of um, art, but also the principles of design. So variety is used, you can see it weave throughout everything. Um, there's very specific examples of every single one, but obviously every single element, every single principle ties into one another. Variety, unity, and harmony are very heavily tied into one another, but variety is one of those ones where you can find very, very specific examples of every single element, every single principle throughout each piece that you see. Yeah, contrast probably my personal favorite thing to play with in my art. Definitely. I find that a lot of my work um, as of late has taken in a lot of inspiration from Baroquean paintings, just because I love that heavy contrast of value. So I'm a really, really big fan of the Baroque period. 
So this one has variety with shape, color, and movement. Uh, so every stick figure is it's approximately the same. There. Yeah, this that's right. <laughs> yep, there. Breaks up. The monotony. Sorry I'm late. You're not too late. Hello, Drew. Welcome in. Alright, so this piece untitled Dance by Keith Haring has variety with shape, color, and movement. Um, color's obvious, I'm not even gonna write it down, right? The people that are in there, they're different colors, has variety. Nice. Um, actually, though, what I will say is that this um, piece is a polychromatic um, color scheme. You never heard of polychromatic color scheme? It's literally just use every single color that you can. <laughs> um, polychromatic is very, very hard to work with and get it right. Um, so Keith Haring was a very, very good at using polychromatic schemes. Um, but Polychromatic is literally just include the rainbow. It's there. <laughs> like there's no real dominant colors that pop out. They're all just kind of equal. Um, though it does help to have one dominant color while all the others are still very saturated and present. Um, but yeah, so that's your variety with color. You can't get any more variety with color than a polychromatic scheme. <laughs> um, but it has variety of the shape and movement. Um, shape is fascinating because technically these stick figures are very, very similar. They're very similar in their proportion. They're very similar within their overall stature. Um, however, every stick figure feels very, very different because of their movement. So their movement breaks up the monotony. It makes them feel different. It makes them feel interesting. Every single person in this piece, there's five of them, but every single one feels different because of their movement. And that adds a nice bit of variety in there. Um, obviously, I'm not going to write it down because it's unity, but what keeps this piece nice and unified is... Um, as a staple of a lot of Keith Haring's work is the bold black line work that keeps its uh, keeps its general shape in there. It doesn't really have any variety um, with its line work, and it's all bold and black and very very heavy. So there's a lot of variety with line work, but it's what keeps that entire piece unified, and it's also a very harsh signature of Keith Haring's style. So obviously it's there for us to see. All right, our last little example, as all of our element streams goes or principal streams goes. We always start with the more historical stuff, and then we get into the more pop culture stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you, it was kind of hard to, to pick something for this one that wasn't Kirby. Because <laughs> all my favorite examples are all from Kirby. Um, but this one I figured. I included two screenshots just because it's a little bit easier to work with them this way. Let me just fix this up real quick, just so that they're about the same size. Just about the same size, I need to be exact. It's gonna, oops, it's gonna end me if they're not the same, but it's okay. I'll have to live with it. Oh, can I not merge these? All right, I'm gonna merge them. Um, this is a Kirby game I actually haven't played. This is one that I skipped out on. Um, I don't know why, but I just never played the Rainbow Curse. So this is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Oh, you know what I could have used? I could have used Franbo. Though Franbo is a bit scary, so maybe I shouldn't have used that one. But I do love Franbo. <laughs> that studio makes great games. Um, so number five is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse from 2015. This is a Wii U game um, that I didn't get for some reason. But <laughs> I saw videos and I was like, oh, this is cute. And then I never played it. Um, so this one is Variety. Through Form. The fun thing about Kirby, Kirby's entire universe, I could have done this with any other Kirby game, um, but I wanted to highlight the texture in this one. Um, but the fascinating thing about every Kirby game is that all Kirby characters Oh, this is through form and shape. Sorry, I should have added shape in there. All Kirby characters are very rounded. Oops. Uh, 
let me just make this another point. The differing features. And elements. Elements? Differing features and not elements is another word for it. I was just gonna say different features. The different features add variety to each character. So it could be props, limbs, facial features. Etc. Right? So Kirby has story of my life, my Steam library is filled with games I've never played. See, I don't actually use Steam that often. Um, so I don't have that many games on Steam that I haven't played. Um, but I I feel it's just like games that I just don't play. Had to delete games that I rarely play on my phone. I don't play phone games very often. It's like mobile games don't have the it's rare that they have the ability to hold my attention. The games that would have the ability to hold my attention are gotcha games. I'm not gonna risk that. Not at all. <laughs> so, uh, the thing with Kirby, um, this piece, one in particular, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, variety through form and shape. So I could have picked any Kirby game for this. Um, all Kirby characters are very, very rounded. You'll notice this. If you think of any Kirby character, think of a single Kirby character that is very, very hard edged and nothing but hard edged. You can't. There isn't. Because Kirby has a lot of unity through its very, very... Um, a lot of harmony through its very rounded shapes, right? They're not exactly all the exact same shapes, so that's a little bit more harmony than it is unity, but um, they're all very, very rounded, which creates this nice harmonious balance throughout all of their features. However, um, they add variety because of their different features, right? You can see them in the background of the title screen here. So Kirby, obviously, a lot of circles, nothing but circles. Um, but you have some of the bosses and enemies, well, not bosses, but some of the enemies back here. Uh, this is... Oh no, it's uh, I used to know his name. This enemy, I used to know this enemy's name. Anyway, um, right, still very similar in terms of the shape of the overall body, but he has wings. His eyes are different, mouth is different. That adds a little bit of variety. This character back here, same pink kind of cute shape, but it's got a spring, it's got a bow. If you actually look behind it, that's a bow. Uh, these guys still rounded, but very, very different. They have a little bit of an extension. They got a little skirt. They got spears, nice. DDD, if you think of the, the pig penguin from Kirby, right? He's got, he's a penguin, so obviously he's not just a round ball, but he's got the same feet, um, which gives us a nice bit of unity. Um, obviously, there are different features, like color. Obviously, there's like, it's an overarching, very bright palette, um, very triadic bright palette, but it still adds variety since it is triadic and they're all in very opposite, opposing ends of the color wheel. So, different features add variety to each character with props, limbs, facial features, etc. Um, the really fun thing about Kirby games is that each one has something that keeps them very, very unified. It's something fun that keeps them unified. And Kirby and the Rainbow Curse is an excellent um, job of unity through texture. I'm not writing this down because it's unity, uh, but it's unity through texture because um, similar to how Kirby's Epic Yarn was all fabric, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse was all clay, it was plasticine. So everything in that game was photographed and stop motion animated outside of the game um, to create this nice little clay figurine look. Meta Knight as well. Yeah, so Meta Knight was nice. Um, adds a nice kind of darker palette to Kirby as a whole. So he creates that bit of more <laughs> variety. The gotcha curse. Yeah, no, I can't play gotcha. I, I've already been like, I've been dangerously teetering on um, getting obsessed with IRL gotcha. So that's blind boxes. Um, Lord knows that I, I would lose my, oops, I would lose my mind if I played like, you know, gotcha games because I don't have the wallet control. So that's Kirby the Rainbow Curse from 2015. So that's going to be our final little example. I should have saved this file earlier. I haven't saved once. That's dangerous. <laughs> so that's 41, stream number 41. You have no idea how many years it took me to find out DDD is a penguin, really? <laughs> Maybe it's just because I watched the anime, so then they, they called him like a a dictating penguin all the time. Um, 
But yeah, so those are going to be our examples for variety. So a bit of a different lesson, a bit of a different way to teach this lesson. Um, but hopefully that was interesting and fun and epic. Uh, whoops, let's do this real quick. Let's edit this canvas size. Let's go down to 6,000. No, let's go to 6,500. There it is. Mm. Okay, I'll crop it closer later. Um, yeah, so that's going to be our lesson on variety. Right, so variety is not too, too tough. It's a fun kind of, it's a bit of an easy one. It's not like anything crazy is going on, right? So again, a bit of a tougher one for me to teach, but a really, really easy one for you to understand. What did you think he was? Some people thought that DDD was a duck. It's kind of like deciphering what Yoshi is. It's like, what is he, dinosaur, lizard, dragon? No one knows. Um, I'm pretty sure he's a, some people say he's a turtle because of his little shell on the back. Um, I'm pretty sure he's a dinosaur, but I think, I mean, I, I think, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, who knows with Nintendo. So, our thing for today, our thing for today is we're going to be drawing 100 Kirby's. Well, that means that I'm just going to be drawing Kirby over and over, but we're going to make him different every single time. So with the poll that was given for this week, it was going to be Kirby in a bunch of different art styles. So I'm going to be drawing, um, I want to say minimum seven, max 10 of different Kirby's in different art styles. Um, so we're going to be playing with that for a little bit, but within the chat, just, just start like spamming some of your suggestions, right? What Kirby's do you want to see? What do you want to see him wear? What, like, if you want classic Kirby abilities, what classic Kirby abilities do you want? Right? Do you want, like, Fire Kirby, Ice Kirby? If you play Smash Bros, what Kirby hats do you want to see? So I got those two. My favorite Kirby hat from Smash Bros has to be the Game & Watch one. I love the Game & Watch one. We're just gonna do, like, normal Kirby first. Kirby Army, yeah, so there's gonna be a hundred of them. Um, so... If you suggest once, um, suggest again, because <laughs> I'll see him in a, I'll try to do as many as I can. Hey, do you mind like turning on the lamp for me, please? Thank you. Realistic group? Yeah, I'm probably going to do that. <laughs> no. There's a little switch on the inside. Studio Trigger Kirby? That'd be kind of funny. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little knob that should be on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing with Kirby is that he's really, really easy to draw. Um, so that's why I can do 100 of them. You may need to twist it the other way. If it starts to get looser, then you're going to have to twist it the other way. It should be twisting to the right. Yeah, there you go. One more. Air Kirby? Um, there is Wing Kirby. There's actually two Air Kirbys. There's Wing Kirby and then there's Tornado Kirby. Corb. It's more Corb the better. Uh, Ray, Ray is here, by the way. Ray used to work for Wing Canvas when we were both co-op students. Donkey Kong Kirby? That's a good one. Donkey Kong Kirby was great from Smash. Joker Kirby? Joker Kirby was good, too. Like, from Smash? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were that. Like Batman? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna... I, I saved you from you saying Marvel. <laughs> Listen, I wouldn't care either. It's okay. <laughs> this is Kirby number one. I should just do this all on one layer. Two layers. I don't need to have a sketch for Kirby. That's not something I need. <laughs> DK Kirby. Yeah, I'll do them in a second. So we're going to start with the different art styles. I'll do like seven of them or so. Um, and then we'll move on to the suggestions. DK Kirby. We're going to get to them. Don't worry. Don't worry. Square Corb. Square Corb. Oh, Minecraft Corb. That's from, uh, <laughs> from Smash. Okay, different art styles. Let's go for something. Let's go for like... I'm gonna have to use a few layers for this one. Because I'm lazy and I want to do this one really, really fast. So I don't have to think about it. Um, cool. Let's 
Okay, so I'm seeing a bunch of them move in the chat. I will check them out afterwards as I work through these. I don't like the airbrush on Medi Bang. It does hit a little bit weird. Because even on 10% opacity, it becomes like 100% opaque after like two strokes, which is really weird. This is not the way that I would shade normally, by the way. I don't, <laughs> I just want to move a bit faster. <laughs> uh, I hate the airbrush. <laughs> Bad practice. It's better to use a hard edged brush. I know. <laughs> Why can't I do more than one? Why can't I merge more than one, two layers at once? Um. Artist Kirby? There is a copy ability for Artist Kirby. Do you want the copy ability or for me to create a new one? <laughs> it's in it. Pusheen Kirby? I love Pusheen. I have like two Pusheen plushies. So that's one. That's two. I'm trying to zoom through these. Alright, let's have some fun with this one. <laughs> the same issue on Medibang? Yeah. I don't use Medibang as frequently. Outside of Wing Canvas, I like don't use Medibang. <laughs> and it's okay. It's whatever, you know, whatever works for you, you know. I have not specified where these art styles are coming from, and that's because they don't come from anywhere. I've just decided to, you know. There you go, Ray. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Yeah. This is so cursed. It's a good one. <laughs> Let's go. Vampire Kirby. Oh, that's so cute. Piranha Plant Kirby. Ah, from Smash. Excellent decision. That's a good one. That's number three. <laughs> Hundred of these, huh? <laughs> I know. Well, we, we stream until six, so we got time. Yeah. <laughs> you use Clip? Yeah, I use uh, a blend of Clip and Photoshop. I know Clip is getting the liquify soon, so congrats to you. <laughs> Clip is fantastic. I love the perspective on it. The perspective ruler is my best friend. <laughs> because I'm too lazy to draw on my own perspective lines. <laughs> anime Boy Kirby. It's, uh, I don't know what's happening here. I, oh, you want Anime? I got you. You want Anime Boy Kirby. I don't remember how to write Nani. <laughs> I'm talking like, yeah. Let's go. Nightmare Fuel Kirby. No, 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 absolutely. That's Nightmare Fuel. I want that. I want that. That's good. Yeah, this is more like anime boy. You gotta do the, you gotta do the, like, the thing that they do, the, yeah. <laughs> the little triangle that I used to draw when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, it's valid. It'll just the little shadow. I'll give him a little bit of shading. I don't have screen tones on this, I don't think. I finally got a Medibang account so I can do something that isn't the... Yeah, I don't. I don't have stuff, so I could use stuff that wasn't like just the default. Um... I 
I couldn't find a screen tone though, because you need to pay for like all of the. I learned that you need to pay for all of the access to everything, but you just need a cloud account for some of the brushes. Okay. Jojo for Kirby. I knew somebody was gonna request it. <laughs> it was it was happening in there. I think I've drawn that before though. We'll see if I can dig up back into my the depths of my memory for that one. You don't know Kirby that much? That's fine. I am the one who's uh, a little bit too obsessed with Kirby. That's, that's on me. <laughs> that's four. <laughs> Anime noses either don't exist or protrude from the head like a snout. Super true. Actually, it depends on what series you're in, but super true. Also true. <laughs> Could try using the mask layer, which from like the clipping mask. Cause I don't think that Medibank has actual layer masks. And I was like thinking of uh, using screen tones. So screen tones are like the the way that manga is shade. This is the traditional way of doing it, which is like you get like the, the sheet of screen tones and you cut them out. What am I doing with this one? Uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just don't like, don't think. <laughs> Let's go. Kirby with an afro? I can do that. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah. I know there is a mask layer, Medibang, the ad layer of working class. Oh, what? What is. Oh, that's so weird. Okay. Thank you. I didn't know that. That's so strange. So do they have like a whole other layer for like screen tones? Ah, that's strange. Do you know if Clip has that? This is just like like a, a layer a layer style where it's just half tones. No. Oh, so that's an exclusive to many. That's strange. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. Duck Kirby. Wait. Oh no. No, this is not Duck Kirby. Duck. <laughs> duck. This is not a duck. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that later. Yeah. No. This is a. This is just Kirby. I don't know what. Uh, there's nothing wrong with him. I, like this is just complete. This is a completely normal Kirby. Look <laughs> what they did to my boy. They, me, look what I did. This is art. This is art, Jack. I don't know about you. Um, my last request is gummy Kirby. Like Kirby with Kirby with like a gummy texture. Oh, that's gonna take a while. Um, I can try it. Kirby after he ate Ash from Pokemon. I can't do the first bit of that one. Why Ash specifically? <laughs> That's very specific. Wait, but if he... The thing with that, though, Kirby, like, doesn't have teeth. So he just eats him one go, right? So it's like, it would just be, like, one and done. thing is, is that I don't want to spend too much time on all of these because you know I have a bunch of them to do 
If I don't get to 100, then I'll do as many as I can. <laughs> so that's five. Reminds me of Animal Crossing builds are valid. Sorry, that was my brother. Which one was your brother? It just came to mind. I see. Gummy Kirby, huh? It's all right, let's just use color then. Let's rely on color for this one. Let's use another layer. Because uh -huh. we're going to try to make these a little bit translucent. Whoops. Oh, whoops. Yeah, many bang is this fun little thing where if I erase too much, if I use the brush too much, then it'll erase at like 100% opacity, which is very, very strange. Yo, why am I str <laughs> why am I struggling? <laughs> the more Kirby's the better. Sora Kirby? Well, I haven't actually seen his copy ability with Sora from the new one. I will check that one for you. I'm gonna have to scroll up in the chat to see what we have. Emo phase Kirby? I can do that one right now. I have <laughs> think of the most emo lyrics that I can make. All right, I got you. I got it. I'm gonna draw Kirby the way that I did when I was a preteen. So edgy. <laughs> Extremely buff Kirby. Oh, sir. Or man. Friend. That was my entire life back when I was a kid. <laughs> I still kind of do that one now. A Goku Kirby? Hmm. Alright, just for a little bit, let's halt on the requests uh just so that i can kind of go through them a little bit but thank you for these so far oh my kirby it's more anime kirby's let's just turn that opacity a little bit He out here. Beltane Kirby? I can do that one right now, too. Can't drown my demons. They know how to swim. I can't sing it. I, I was gonna sing it, but then I realized I shouldn't just in case. <laughs> Yep. 
Here he is. Little goopy. He's melting. Save him. <laughs> Save him. This is number eight. All right, let's scroll all the way back up here. Let's do a trigger Kirby. Trigger Kirby? All right, let's see how I manage this. This is 41-1. Trigger has really, really clean lines. I unfortunately do not have the time for extremely clean lines, so... Oh! Uh, he's having a fun time being melted. Yeah, he's just vibing. Don't worry about it. He's not He's not in pain. He's just kind of chilling. Sorry, I need to look up Studio Trigger off to this side. Could Kirby be a ditto that was born with different abilities? Perhaps. Oh, let's mimic that. That's nice. Yeah, the thing with triggers, it's like, this is not the anatomy that would be used with trigger. <laughs> I'm trying to make these like all really, really fast because I got to draw a lot of them. So, <laughs> gotta make sure that they don't. You know, take too, too long. Else I won't be able to finish them all. Depending on which Kirby game you go through, his eyes might be blue. So I am going to go with that for a bit. And Trigger has very, very saturated shadows. So. So I'm not using any layer styles for this one. I'm just gonna go straight from like color theory knowledge, <laughs> just so I can move a little bit faster. You could have a giant flash of bolded text in front of him for trigger. I could, but I'm I'm gonna call this one done. Oh, I should make this a little bit longer so then I can. Let's go 3100. Then I can put them in rows of 10. For organization purposes. Trigger Air Kirby. 
I will go with Wing Kirby just because because there's a reference for that. Oh, you know what? No, I won't. I'll go with Tornado Kirby. Just because Wing Kirby might be a bit rough to work with. So I will work with Tornado Kirby instead. Tornado Kirby is not one of my favorite abilities. I do like Tornado Kirby, though. Um, out of all of the abilities, I, I do think Wing is my favorite. Um, but just to be safe, I will not be drawing Wing Kirby. I don't remember which episode Tornado Kirby was in in the anime. Because I remember it being there, but I'm like, like, man, what episode was it? I don't remember exactly. And they had Turby, Tornado Kirby out of the games for a while. For a really long time, they didn't have Tornado Kirby. They did bring him back, though. <laughs> and some Squidward Kirby. Oh my. Yeah, sorry if I'm a little low energy. I am a little bit sleepy. But that's okay. We all get sleepy from time to time. Oops. Yeah, the ability ones are going to take a bit longer because they have more things added onto them. And I need to draw them in there. It's impossible to feel awake without dark outside. It is. Yeah, I have like my light on in my room right now. I'm like trying not to get too sleepy. <laughs> Okay, that's number 10. Kitty Kirby. Ah, oh, Kirby. Cat Kirby. I can definitely do that. Oh no, I am going to be pull into the depths of my memory for this one. Because I, I drew a lot of Cat Kirby when I was younger. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Sorry. All right, cool. Have fun. Absolutely nobody is surprised that I used to draw Cat Kirby all the time. <laughs> I am a predictable woman. Highly predictable. If you know me well enough, everything that I do is very, very predictable. Oh, whoops. The characters that I like, the the things that I enjoy, very. I'm a very predictable woman. I'm not. I 
at this point, my best friend literally, like, she recommends me stuff based on, like, the tropes that I like. She's like, hey, I bet you'd like this. And she's right. She's, like, right 99% of the time. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. She'd like this. Sends it to me. It's like, hey, you'd like this. I'm like, yeah. You're right. Cat Corb. Does that mean that he ate a cat? That's unfortunate. <laughs> Sorry, but the chat isn't scrolled down, so I haven't seen it. Uh, just in case. Meta Knight Kirby. The OG pixel form? That's gonna take too long. I can do Meta Knight Kirby like within like this line art thing, but pixel art takes me way too long. I can definitely do Meta Knight Kirby though, like the Smash version. This is 11. Donkey Kong Kirby, uh, DK Kirby. That one I remember by heart, I think. Okay, I don't know what I heard. Uh, Donkey Kong Kirby. Oh, I was pretty close. Okay. Donk Kong. <laughs> Donk Kong. I was wondering if he had the tie or not, because like I'm like, I don't know if he has the Donkey Kong tie. I completely forgot. Whenever I play as Kirby Smash, I like it's always accidental that I use the copy ability. Like I never really I'm a terrible Smash player, so I just like spam. I don't <laughs> I don't actually play the game. I just, you know. That's number 12. Okay. Oh, Joker Kirby. Okay. Number three <laughs> scares you? Yeah, valid. Hello, Gash Catcher. Welcome in. <laughs> LOL. Um, what was next? What did I read? I just like put this pull back up. <gasps> Hi. Sm Joker Kirby. That one I actually don't have memorized. That's uh Oh wait, he's the one with the eyes. He's got the Yeah. <laughs> Why so cute. Thank you. I love this one. The Joker Kirby. I mean like changed his eyes. I don't get why they did that. The joys. Terrifying. Wait, what? Oh no, uh, Aku suggested earlier that uh, I draw Kirby after he's eaten Ash Ketchum. Don't know why, but. <laughs> Sorry, Ash Ketchum in the chat. Apparently, you've been eaten by uh, Kirby. Kirby ate me, apparently. Sorry, I, this is not my, not my canon. Oh, that means I gotta give him the hair. Hang on, let me look at the left arm. I know. <laughs> to figure this out. Okay, uh. I'm not working with a sketch. That's gonna take too long. Looking good, Joker. I can't do the boys right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't worry. It's not a don't worry. <laughs> I'm just gonna simplify this. Sorry, Persona fans. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this.
<laughs> struggling. <laughs> There's too much hair. Oh, and then the... Bro, he got lashes, though. Honestly, felt. Pretty boy lashes. True! But they're drawn on his side because it's like a mask. Yeah. <laughs> the ambiguity of one's existence after being swallowed by Kirby frightens me daily. Valid. Very valid. <laughs> Isn't this identity theft? Like, if Kirby, like, eats somebody and, like, assumes their identity- Isn't this identity theft? Dang. You could arrest- You could arrest him. You can't arrest Kirby. True. He'd eat the entire police force. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> That's true cosmic horror. So true! Actually, there is an episode of the anime- um, in Kirby, when uh, DDD gets eaten by Kirby, um, and he finds himself just floating in the void, and he's like, "What?" He's, he's like trying to figure out where he is so he can escape. But he's like, he's learned that the inside of Kirby is literally just the void. So uh, I guess that the show made it canon what the inside of Kirby looks like, and it's uh, the end of existence. So I think that's pretty sick. I think that's pretty uh, neato. So. <laughs> He's doing free requests. No worries. I'm going to do a bunch of the requests. Um, once I get close to the end of that list, I'm going to ask for them again. Oh, there's a creature. <laughs> Stop. 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 <laughs> there are a lot of fruit flies in my house. I don't know why. It's the winter. It's the creatures. Plump Kirby. Oh, like fat Kirby? Yeah, I got you. Round. I have a, I have a plush of that. That Ray got me. For my 20th. So, yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to get me gifts. Anything Kirby related is like, yeah. That's epic. Okay. This is number 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's graphite so i've been using him as like a drawing stand because i don't actually have a drawing stand so like he lay on top of um, a piece of my hair from the self-portrait so <laughs> it ended up smudging and i was like oh no like <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've meaning to wash it because it makes me upset i'm like oh, man no, <laughs> he needs to clean <laughs> kirby is the angel of death oh true I'm going to merge those two just for now uh, because I need to change the sizing of these ones. Lasso's not working today. What? Ah, sorry, you scared me! <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> touched the top of my head. Um, what else is there? Kind of playing. Um, Smash Bros. Joker. Oh, Minecraft hat Kirby. Oh, two people requested Cube Kirby. Okay. Got you. Cube. He's a good cube. Cool cube corp. Minecraft skin Kirby was fantastic. When I saw that, I cried. <laughs> Bro, maybe I did need that cube lesson. I'm bad at cubes, dude. <laughs> what is happening here? Okay. The lesson's over. He doesn't need to see this. My prof is shaking his head at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm trying to speed run this. Oh my god, it's top of the hour. Uh, that was top of the hour 20 minutes ago. I will do my thing. In a second. Actually, I might not, just because I'm trying to speedrun. So, <laughs> we may end up leaving it to the end today. 
just for today. Cuboidal Corb. There he is. Oh. Oops. I'm trying not to think while I do these. I make them too large. Okay, I guess I do need to think. Um, calculator Kirby. Hmm. <laughs> One winged angel starts playing. No. Should his blushes be cubes? Oh, you're right. That's true. My bad. All right, let's fix that. Let's go. <laughs> In perspective, kind of. We don't need to worry about it. What did I just read? I don't even remember. Calculator? Calculator. Thank you. <laughs> How do I draw this? <laughs> Kirby, but within his equations. LOL. I was just gonna draw a curve calculator with Kirby's face on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just draw the, the equations meme with like the woman with the, the spinning <laughs> equations around. Is that an emo Kirby? Yeah, it is. This is how I used to draw Kirby back when I was like 12. That's not a lie, by the way. That's the <laughs> minus the hair. These expressions were very prevalent on my old Kirby's with the eyebrow too. Calculator Kirby would throw math equations at you. So spooky. No one has a cal. True, but like. <laughs> no, that doesn't help me. Um... It's okay. I haven't used a calculator other than to like add or subtract or multiply in like four years, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call this the decimal. I'll call this the, uh, actually, let's reverse that. This is the decimal. This is the C. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, so that's number 15. Alice Cooper? I'm not sure who that is. Among Us Kirby! Help me. Oh! Yeah, I can do this, Alice Cooper. Sure. Hello, Pastel Lollipop. Welcome in. Yakusoku no Leverland? Is that the Japanese name for Promise Neverland? Uh, Yakusoku no, ne uh, no Neverland? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm a genius. 200 IQ. I got you. I've never watched Promise Neverland. Yeah, maybe one day. If I can get past the the look. I will try my best. <laughs> yeah, I've been told. But I'm like, it'll always be in the back of my brain. <laughs> you watch season one, and then there's the rest. Okay, I've been told that season two is terrible, so... Of like the show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I... Oh, okay. Valid. Your heart is cute. Thank you. Because there's actually like progression of for their height and time and age. Oh, valid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. They get taller. <laughs> As they should. If they're aging, they should get taller. Hello, Ryder. Welcome in. I don't know what I've done with this calculator, Kirby. This is not the colors that I should have used, but whatever. It's okay. I'm late again. It's okay, Marlene. You've got about a half hour left. Oh boy, I'm not going to be able to do 100. <laughs> um, Artist Kirby, which is actually a copy ability, so let me do that. Art Kirby is such a good ability. Because Art Kirby, like, depending on the command, like, the 
A, you can attack with it. B, you can actually... Um, it regens health. So you can draw a fridge and it'll toss food out. And then you... Artist Kirby's the best ability. <laughs> it used to be super, super limited, but now they've created it. Like, they've with the newer games, it's like a more... Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Artist Kirby is one of the best abilities. Isn't in the older games, but it is present in the new ones. It's got a little paint splatter. How cute is that? Yeah. My boy. Pokemon Kirby. You're gonna have to be more specific than that. <laughs> Steampunk Kirby? That's actually a thing. So that's, um... That's a series that they did a little while ago. So Steampunk Kirby, the series, is actually real. Um, so I'll probably reference off of that once we get to it. That would be ditto. Valid. Yeah, you're gonna have to be more specific with Pokemon Kirby, because that, uh, there's a good, like, how many Pokemon are there now? Like, a good, like, 900 or something? Yeah, you're gonna have to be more specific than that. <laughs> uh, red. The fun thing with Artist Kirby is that Artist Kirby, I believe, was introduced after Kirby and the Crystal Shards. Um, Kirby and the Crystal Shards had a girl named Adeline, and she was the living embodiment of Artist Kirby. So she was just a completely separate character. Um, but she only showed up in the Crystal Shards. So then they made her into a copy ability instead. I've never actually finished Kirby and the Crystal Shards because I played on a ported version of it, not the real one. Because I did not have a game key, or I didn't have an N64. That's what it was on. 16. Dragon Pokemon Kirby? Again, you're. Oh, Garchomp or Salamence? I'm gonna go Salamence just because I like wings. But um, I'll draw that one after I get to the other requests because there were quite a few of them. He's an art nerd. He is. Um, Pusheen Kirby. I love Pusheen. Oh, yes. And I'll just... Yeah. yeah this is a good illustration. <laughs> this is a good one. This is what your art degree is for. Yes. This is what my art degree is going towards. Let's go. <laughs> degree in art. No, I'm getting a degree in... I'm technically getting a bachelor's of design. Um, but regardless... This is what my degree is going towards, guys. <laughs> what better life to live than to just draw as many Kirby's as possible? Pusheen, hand sanitizer Kirby? Okay, let's see what this looks like. Didn't know Kirby had this much lore! Kirby's got a lot of lore, actually. Um, <laughs> he's so cute. He looks so derpy. I love him. What did I just say? Hand sanitizer Kirby. Hand sanitizer. No, I don't need the clip art. I just hand sanitizer. Puro. What did this look like? I don't. Know. His face instead of the logo. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like the whole bottle is just him. <laughs> we love a multi-talented. <laughs> True. <laughs> Wash. <laughs> Do it. He's threatening you. 
He almost looks like a mind turtle. I haven't thought of mind turtles in years. That's such an old reference, Jack. <laughs> Wash. Been a while since I thought about that. Yeah, me too, buddy. <laughs> Last time I thought about mind turtles was almost a decade ago. All right. It was after that. Um. Hand sanitizer. Vampire Kirby. Okay. Thank you, Daria. Watch. <laughs> Watch. Play the Game Boy Advance game of Kirby. That's it. That would be... Ooh. Was that Super... No. Superstar was... The SNES. Yeah. Ooh, Game Boy Advance Kirby? That's one of the early, early Kirbys. Thanks. <laughs> this one does kill 100% of germs. So true. Oh, what did I just say? It was Vampire Kirby, yeah. Game Boy Advance Kirby's Adventure. Ah. Yes, Nightmare in Dreamland is the one that closest resembles the anime. Oh, the Amazing Mirror is a good one, actually. So there's three that were on the Game Boy Advance. Number eight? Melted Kirby? He's there. Don't worry. He's fine. <laughs> He's just vibing. <laughs> he melted, lol. <laughs> yeah. He's okay. He's okay with this. Give him a little cape. Nosferatu. He's here to end your life. <laughs> you had a good run. <laughs> Oh, let's expand this by two again. I think I set it to zero earlier. Yeah. Can I fill this? Ooh, nice. Even faster. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I have a very strong love of drawing teeth. <laughs> I really love drawing teeth. I don't know why. I think that when did I start really loving drawing teeth? That was like high school, I know, but like um, grade eleven ish, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> I don't know why I like that so much. Yeah, I have a very strong love of drawing teeth. Very blah blah. Yeah. All right. Vampire. Piranha Plant Kirby. I don't remember how this one looks completely. I spelled that wrong. My bad. Mm -hmm. Wait, which one? This one? Yeah. Let's go. So cute. <laughs> I love him. Oh, let's do this one from the side. Let's do a profile. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> Dying to curb Feratu is not too bad. True. I think that's a pretty that's a pretty preferred way for me to go. He is here. Kirby. <laughs> is that what it says? Oh no, that's what you're saying. <laughs> Businessman Kirby would be very nice. <laughs> we'll keep that in the brain. I completely forgot that like the paint bucket tool existed. I've been drawing them in normally this whole time. I have no clue why. I didn't touch it you liked it. No. So I didn't say anything about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did it because I completely forgot that that was a thing. 
We're good. Oh, that's going much faster. That's 20. Nice. Two rows. Yay. Yay. Can Kirby eat Kirby? Technically, yes, in Smash, but it doesn't do anything. Um, true. It's like dividing by zero. Um. Jojo Kirby. Okay, let's figure this one out. PvP? <laughs> True. Okay. I'm not going to look up a reference for this one. I don't care enough. That's a joke. I'm just... <laughs> I'm working without a reference for this one to see how well I can do this without one. Have a lot of problems with Medibang paint tool. How do you get to not leave the white trim around the lines? You're gonna have to with your paint bucket. If you're using the paint bucket, you have to up here. You're gonna have to expand it by two. Turn up your tolerance as well if you want to. Um, but I just hit expand by two with your paint bucket. On other programs, it's tolerance. On Medibang, it's expand. If he ate himself, would he be twice as big or disappear? He'd disappear. Jojo. For those of you who are new, I am not a fan of Jojo. But I will draw it for stream. Oh, it's in black and white. My bad. Well, technically there is color, but... Never saw that. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, on other programs, it's um, just tolerance. On Medibang, it's expand. <laughs> He'd be half of himself? Hmm. Alright, because I've been told that I cannot draw anything JoJo related without this. So, <laughs> alright, that's number 21. One is eaten, the other still lives. Hmm. Another part of plant. Kirby with an afro? Okay, I can do that. <laughs> this one has seen some stuff. And JoJo's an anime, for those who don't know. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Doesn't it, like, is it a top lip like that? I don't know. It's okay. I'll leave it. Oh, I'm actually going to turn off my correction if I'm drawing an afro. But let me just draw Kirby himself first. All right, let's turn off my correction. Sorry, I need to concentrate on these curls. Just... <laughs> Give him a mustache? I don't know what kind of mustache I'd give him. <laughs> Are we talking like this is like the 70s? <laughs> it's 
70s, 90s. I haven't been along enough. I haven't been alive long enough. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was born in 2001. <laughs> Nineties music. I'm pretty sure because this is like disco, right? So like that has to be the seventies. Nineties was very like rockish, rock and grunge. That's what the nineties was. Eighties was very synth. That's number 22. Bruno Mars Kirby is a great suggestion. Handlebar? You want me to give him a handlebar mustache? Not like, like that. <laughs> I'll do another one with him, not like that. Um, Afro did the gummy one. Kirby after he ate Ash from Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know how I'll do this one. Let's do Am I gonna go? Which hat do I go with? You know, I'll just go with the original one. Consume. <laughs> this is 23. They get more and more weird as I continue to draw them. There we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's the ash one. Sora Kirby. Oh no, that hair is gonna be so tough. Okay. <laughs> Give me a hot second. I gotta analyze this for a sec. That hair is gonna end me. Picasso Kirby? Like, in the cubism style? Oops. Draw him like Picasso? Like, who looks like Pablo Picasso? Or in the cubism style? Oh, sir. This hair. I wonder how much Nintendo paid Disney to get Sora in there, you know? You gotta think. Disney don't come cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I mean... That's alright, Sleepy. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, Kirby just consumes sometimes. Good lord. Alright. Uh, this hair is going to be a struggle. For 
frat boy Kirby with a snapback and bling. Oh, like OG frat. Boy. Okay, that's that. That's on the list. We'll <laughs> we'll see if we can get to it. We got 15 minutes left. I am just drawing as many Kirby's as I can. Um, I don't think I'll get to 100. No, I definitely won't get to 100. I'm only on 20. But oh, this looks like Cloud. <laughs> it doesn't look like Sora. I'm sorry. No, I just give him a key. Keyblade. I can't draw the Keyblade. I'm so sorry. I've never played a Kingdom Hearts game in my life. I know that there's Riku. I know that there's Sora. I know that Aqua got Norded. I don't know what that means, but I know she got Norded. Um... All I know about um, Kingdom Hearts is the video that's like, this is why I can't show Kingdom Hearts to my friends. <laughs> and it's completely out of context for me. And it's hilarious. And I refuse to get any context for it. Oops. Because I think it's really funny. It's like, honestly, I think that it's great without context. Apparently the people who do have context still think it's really funny. So. Hello. The heartless obey, obey me now, Sora. You have nothing to fear. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. I don't know how to draw Sora. That hair is hard. Too hard. <laughs> it's a bummer that I pause the stream while at the gym so the video and the chat don't match. That's okay, Chipster. You can always go back to rewatch. I know a lot of one-liners from Kingdom Hearts. My favorite, one of my favorites has to be, say fellas, somebody say the door to darkness, and then uh, Mickey is standing there in a giant, like, fantasy boy black cape. That's a good one. Um, also, um, that was undeniable proof that we totally owned you, lamers. That's a great one. I don't know who wrote the the script um but they're uh they're the true heroes woke woke um who said sora sora was there dark souls kirby like a dark souls monster all right hang on wow i spelled souls wrong <laughs> dork souls let's just do the knight because then i can just draw the head <laughs> did somebody mention the door of the darkness yeah that's a great <laughs> mouse game <laughs> oh i was gonna just i started to my brain said like a skyrim reference this is not skyrim or i guess skyrim oblivion they're kind of the same thing Stop. You violated the law. <laughs> Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. I thought you were going to say that Halo's the new one. Oh. Very popular. Yeah, well, that's a popular one too. I like the, the NPC kind of. The walking. <laughs> the walking is so good. I've never played Dark Souls, I'm sorry. I'd get too frustrated too oh, fast. Dark Souls. <laughs> hard. Yeah, no, I'd get frustrated too fast. I would just stop playing. LOL. <laughs> I do love Dark Souls designs though. Those monsters are beautiful. Yeah. They look great. Dork Souls. I remember being the first boss and then traversing through and then meeting an old man with a katana. And then I died. Dork souls. I don't know why that expanded his head a little bit. That's okay. 25. Oblivion has aged beautifully. Yes, it has. <laughs> Oblivion is great. Uh, who was after that? 
Lost Kirby? I may have seen that. Kirby with Afro, Gummy, Dark, Dark oh, Souls, Goku Kirby. Ah, oh, another anime boy. Goku. Oh, I can do this hair. I've drawn Goku before. Literally. Uh, no, I have. I've drawn Goku before. There was that one where it was just people were requesting anime characters to draw. Kirby with mustache. Um, I drew that for like all of high school. You should know exactly what that looks like. <laughs> What's Oblivion? Oblivion's a pretty old game made by Todd Howard, um, guy who made um, Skyrim and Fallout. Um, Oblivion is like Skyrim, but with like if you know that Skyrim is like super buggy, uh, Oblivion's worse. So, <laughs> let's try that again. <laughs> Naruto running Kirby? I can do Naruto Kirby. I'll do that afterwards, so. though. I might not be able to get to all of these requests, by the way, guys. I'll do as many as I- obviously I'm doing as many as I can, but I probably won't be able to get to all of them. They get messier as you go down the line! <laughs> it's okay, it's whatever. Okay. Couple tufts here. Oops. That's twenty six. Why is number seventeen? Like, that's a lot of Kirby's. <laughs> we're gonna come up to thirty, I think. Not the Goku hair you were thinking. Oh, were you thinking like the Super Saiyan Goku? Sorry, it's already there. <laughs> um. Emo Faith already got extremely buff Kirby. Oh, that's that's like I draw that every day. Yeah, the Super Saiyan. Sorry about that. We are doing super buff Kirby though. This one I have drawn many a time. On almost every single whiteboard. <laughs> every single whiteboard in high school has had this Kirby drawn on it before. This is the reason why I'm pretty okay at process. I'm gonna move. <laughs> they still end in the nubs, though. Of course. Yeah. Kirby. Of course. <laughs> Let's go. Kirby, don't miss any gains, dude. All natural. This is the oh what's it called the ideal male physique <laughs> nothing can compare this is 27 chips through the middle saint Seiya kirby i'll see if i can get to it Uh, Ash, Multi, which I've done. Oh, All Might. Goku, no, extremely buff. Oh, All Might is next, okay. This one I can do. Everyone does the buff All Might, so I'm thinking, like, the, the, tri the like, his normal form without the buffness. Oblivion was originally on a 360 and PS3, but I think he can get a PC now that you're Oh, really? Nice. Um, you guys have this Kirby drawn in school? Uh, yeah, well, back when I was in high school, um, whenever there was a just a clear whiteboard, I'd go... I'd just kind of walk up to it and draw, like, a super buff Kirby. No, you know what? Let's not do the teeth. Let's just...
sorry, I'm kind of like, I'm not looking for any more references. <laughs> I mean, I have a reference there, but like, I'm not like really looking at it, you know? I'm kind of like half looking at it. <laughs> We've got about five minutes left, so. I think we're going to cap it at 30. Did as many as I could. Skipping lighting day. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Small Bright's really fun to draw, I gotta say. I was never a really huge My Hero fan. I did like My Hero, but it wasn't something that I got really, really into. So, like, I never actually learned how to draw any of them. Like, I never watched the anime. I did read it, though. I read pretty far into the manga. Um, over time, though, I just kind of went like, yeah, I kind of get the gist and stopped, <laughs> stopped reading. I'll just I'll just give him the color of his actual hair. Oh, it's lighter than that. That's not correct. I'm trying to color match with my eyes right now. Oh, that's a bit better. That'll have to do. That's number twenty-eight. Where bod in the void. True. I'm trying to keep the integrity of Corb. Melting Kirby, I've done. Handsome Squidward Kirby, oh boy. Uh. I felt the same way until I read it head to the overhaul arc and I couldn't stop. Valid. All the other things are Kirby 8. Super true. I can't do that. Like, I can't just skip areas. Because then I'll feel really bad about it. So, like, I just... If I don't like something, then I just drop it. It was the same thing with, like, AOT. Just got it. it got real boring at that one point and I was like, when are they gonna fight something again? So I just like stopped reading. I have a friend who used to have Handsome Squidward memorized. I do not have Handsome Squidward memorized. Oh, hello? Oh, that must have been my mother. Poor girl just wanted to have some peas. Is that who? This is handsome Squidward. <laughs> I don't know much about anime, I'm sorry. If that's an anime character. Okay. Um... Yeah, we did a f we did quite a few while you were gone. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the last one, which is gonna be Meta Knight Kirby, which I know how to do from memory. AOT has been really hard to pick back up since the new season. Since I couldn't remember enough, I also didn't want to watch the whole thing again. I honestly like I read the manga, so like I'm not much of an anime watcher. I usually read it, so like AOT's manga just got real boring at one point, and I was like, I didn't. Is it finished now? Oh, I didn't know that. 
because I stopped reading it. <laughs> the ending is just Is it? Okay. I don't know if I'll ever get the past it, but if I ever decide to pick it back up. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to spoilers about that because I don't think I'll ever pick it back up. Okay. And then in the Smash Bros. versions, he gets the wings. Because it depends on which game you get, but sometimes. Oh, that's the wrong layer. Oh, well. Forgot it automatically makes a new layer. Oops. This is going to be our last one for the night, guys. Oh, did it merge down with the wrong layer? Are you kidding me? Okay, wait. And then purple. And the eyes are yellow. Oops. All right. <laughs> Wash. Let's go. Ugh. All right, y'all. That's going to be it for today. We did 30. Not too bad. I wasn't gonna, I'm, like, I didn't think I'd get to do 100 of them, but um, 30. Not too bad. Um, thank you so, so much for joining. Um, if you are still kind of tuned in. Um, again, if you don't know too, too much about the channel um, and you it's here for you're here for the first time. I don't know too much about us. We're not just a YouTube channel. We're also an art studio. So if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, I am one of the instructors. There are a bunch of other instructors that sometimes pop in the chat. Um, winter camps are coming up. Um, so if you'd like to sign up for any of those, I will be teaching illustration intensives. If you'd like to learn a bit more about um, art directly from some of us at the studio, then feel free to check them out on our website. This file that you see in front of you, including the um, oh my god, including the lesson will both be available as JPEGs, JPEGs on our Discord. So if you'd like to join the Discord, be sure to join it so you can interact with other fellow art nerds, download this piece, um, save it, keep it, do whatever you want with it, just don't repost it, it's all yours. Um, but if you'd like my working file, this one doesn't have too many layers, but if you'd like my working files to check out my layers, that's when you're gonna have to go over to Patreon for as little as $5 a month. You can get access to all of my working files, um, or at least some of them. Um, but if you have as little as $2, then you can get at least our um, are behind the scenes for the studio. Um, what's happening next week? Good question, Lee. Um, what's the stream next week? Oh, oh, you guys are going to watch me draw one of my Grayson pages. Uh, so next week we're going to be talking about webtoon pages. Um, I'll be drawing one of the Say Hello Grayson pages in front of you guys. Um, so if you'd like to see that, be sure to tune in next week. Um, all right, y'all, so that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so, so much for joining, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye!